this was a journey that I thought we were just going to go see a sunken town. I was going to do a little spirit box. Maybe we'll get something. Maybe we won't. It ended up being, to me, in the end, more of a spiritual pilgrimage to honor those that have gone before us. I mean, my ancestor, that's a Cherokee, might have known these people, or at least would have heard of them. And it's something that no matter where you come from, it rings true to all of our hearts about peace, about love, and understanding each other, and not hate, not revenge, not an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. It's about working things out. And it's just a wonderful, wonderful story. And I hope you enjoyed this journey as much as I did. It was beginning to be the time of the American Revolution. There was the Nine Years' War, the French and Indian Wars. The and Cherokee decided to side with the British because they thought that by siding with them, it would get rid of these new white settlers. What they didn't realize was there was no stopping them. They were outnumbered. Due to some skirmishes here and there, mainly one in South Carolina where some Native American prisoners were killed, there was an attack on Fort Loudoun in Tennessee that happened in 1760. It started in March and ended in August when they finally just had to surrender. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> That's a good idea. It almost makes it look like it wasn't good construction, but it had meaning. Yeah, I saw a port up in Canada. Really feels up there. Good brick oven, man. Oh, well, we didn't think of it, but uh, they built their forts out of treated wood and stainless steel hardware. Oh, <laughs> what didn't we think of that? <laughs> They hammered it together. It wasn't made out of what they did back in the day. Right. <laughs> I remember you telling me that now. <laughs> wow, yeah, that's up on a hill, hill. Huh. I'd do smart thing go up the stairs like that did. <laughs> you know, when they built the bank, or I can't right there where the original there, was man. built. And I looked around and thought, what in the world was Daniel Boone thinking? I wouldn't build a fort here. This place is in a flood plain. <laughs> and then you study the history of it, and that's exactly what happened. It flooded. So they moved the fort to higher ground. <laughs> but they built it there because it was right beside a salt lick. But, I, you know, I'm 
But man, this place would be a swamp, that river comes up, and it did. Mm. Ain't nobody not no better than that. <laughs> They needed Daddy, the real Daniel Boone. <laughs> yeah, yeah, his friend Kenneth come up where we're fixing to go the other day, and he was worried about getting lost, and said he wasn't worried because he was with Daniel Boone. <laughs> yeah, I said, you know how to get back to the boat? He said, I don't need to. I'm with Daniel Boone. <laughs> Isn't that a beautiful sight? <laughs> if y'all friends with my dad on Facebook, he'll have his pictures on there eventually. He's in there. Is it Alan W. Haggard or just Alan Haggard on your Facebook? I'll put a link down below to his Facebook if you want to see his pictures. I get my picture taken from my daddy. <laughs> I let the titanium hip go first. <laughs> That's what I was wondering was, is there something back in there? <laughs> you okay? Oh, my picture? Yeah. Where you want me to stand? You, you want me to put this camera down? Oh, you're good. <laughs> you got the fort there in the background. I'm trying to see. Nah, it's just back at it. I could pick flatter ground and put this silly thing on with it. <laughs> It comes freaking straight up, dude. Oh, man. Those fellas were young back then, man. Oh, dang it. They had uh, strong muscled up hips and butts, I guess. Ooh, okay. They didn't have no 69 men <laughs> walking up and down. They didn't have an 18-year-old. Yeah. Could you imagine being up there? And shoot people. Look at the view from here, guys. Isn't that beautiful? There's somebody talking somewhere. Point out how the walls are sloped out with. God, the spider webs. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Lord, the bugs. That they built this. The Teleco Block House was a United States fortification constructed in 1794 and used through 1807. Primarily, the Teleco Blockhouse served as a check against white settlement deeper into Cherokee lands. It also reserved, it also served as home of the Teleco Factory, a trading post and diplomatic station for the interactions between the Cherokee and federal government. The United States Army constructed the site during very uncertain times. Addressing fears over European meddling in the West, officials hoped that the blockhouse might foster peaceful ties with the Cherokee and curtail the rampant violence of the frontier. The garrison of American um, soldiers acted as a symbol of military power and the government's intent to keep order between the newly arrived settlers and native people. Additionally, the Teleco factory located inside the fort brought spinning wheels, cotton seed looms, and agricultural trading training to the Cherokee. They served to lighten stresses on local ecosystems caused by the fur trade and encouraged the Cherokee to adopt lifestyles similar to their neighbors. By 1807, few Cherokee lived in Little Tennessee River Valley. Valley. As a result, the Army relocated the garrison to the Hiawassee River. A few soldiers remained at the blockhouse through December 1811, but official gatherings took place elsewhere. Wow, that's a pretty good chunk. Look at that. You are here, and you guys are all the way. They're pretty little ways. <laughs> So I'll get back to you when we get there. <laughs> See, this is, uh, there used to be a whole fort here. Right. And, uh, that marks the perimeter. What is that down there? Yeah, okay. Oh, 
Oh my gosh. Holy crap, somebody stirred a some little kid stirred their ball down in there. I don't know if you can see it. Rouse fixing a go. Oh my goodness, they didn't fix that fly pole. That thing about to fall over. That ain't up by stick. It ain't metal, that's actual piece of wood up there. I've never seen that before, that's wild. Okay. Just taking you guys for a walk with me on this beautiful cool day. I hope you're enjoying the historic videos. I know I like to post a lot of haunted stuff, but I like doing the historic too. And I know you guys miss that sometimes, so if you miss the historic videos and you like them, please smash that like button so I'll know that you enjoy these. Okay, so here we are at the water. Oh, Teleco Blockhouse, 1794 to 1807. So if people are on the boat, they can see it. Maybe we were over there instead of the other way. I think maybe we were over here. Or maybe the fort was that way, because I see cars and stuff. At this time, the main mother town for the Cherokee was Chota. And the chief there was Anagukula. He and his forces descended on Fort Loudon and took it over. Anagukula wanted peace at some point. Him, Anakanasta, decided to make a treaty to give up some lands that was hunting lands for the Cherokee to help make some peace. Anakakula had a son named Dragon Canoe who was a warrior and he was very much against this treaty. He did not want to give up any lands. Due to this treaty, he was so upset, he separated ties from his father and created the Chickamauga Indians. They decided that they were going to get revenge as much as they could. Now, Dragon Canoe had a cousin, Anagakula's sister's daughter, Nanyahi. She was born in 1738, and from my research, so was Dragon Canoe. So I would imagine all of them living in Chota, grown up together. These two are probably more like brother and sister than cousins, but they had such opposing views. Dragon Canoe wanted revenge. He wanted blood for blood. Nancy could see the writing on the wall. She could see that there was no escaping these white people coming in. She did believe in retaining the lands, but she believed in peace. Nanya, he has a very interesting story. She was married to a warrior. Under Chief Akinostata, they decided to invade Georgia and battle the Creeks for some land. It was called the Battle of Taliwa. In that battle, Nanya, his husband fell and passed away. Instead of giving up, she picks up his weapon and leads the Cherokee warriors onward to victory at Taliwa. Due to her brave acts, she was granted the name of Beloved Woman. And what this means is she was over the women's council. She could have say-so over prisoners. She was able to negotiate on behalf of the Cherokee. A beloved woman is also believed to hear from the Great Spirit and have the Great Spirit speak through them, just like the Christians would call a prophet. That's what she was considered to the Cherokees was a prophet.
definitely felt hot. <laughs> We've been so cool for so long. <laughs> okay, right over there, you see the marker? Oh, yeah. Uh, now, right over here, past these islands, about 15 years ago, they had some total poles out there, and that marked the town of, of uh, Chota. Those poles are gone now, but those markers are here marking. So the town was right here in this area. Really? And it consisted of like 50, 55 buildings, something like that. 175 warriors were here. Nancy Ward lived here. Uh, so this is uh, right out in this area right here where the town was. Wow, so we're sitting literally on top of a flooded Native American town. Oh, and there's the chief's grave over there. I see yeah, it. Yeah. Well, we'll go over there and look at that. We'll land over here out of the wind. I've got a place over there. Out of the wind, we'll land there and walk through the woods. Okay. Uh, I get you lost over there. Okay. <laughs> Good. Take you to the train station. <laughs> there you go. Oh, God. I have to do some spirit box out here on the water on top of the town. Yeah, we'll get right over here. I believe this is where the building poles were, so you were a good one. I said there was uh, one building that was like 90 feet long. And Cherokee, you know, they, they weren't playing business. They didn't build their houses out of buffalo hides. They built them out of logs. The same material uh, that the white men built theirs out of. Uh-huh. We were in about six feet of water right now. So when the water's down in the winter, uh, you can walk around out here. Really? Yeah, mud out here, four feet, three feet. Water will come down that much. Now, that's why you can't come. See, we're in two and a half feet of water. We're allowed to get there. Oh. There we go. We're just getting around. around. So can you see remnants of the town when it's the water's down? You can't. Oh, it's all totally gone. We were just you know, we're barely able to float right now, flipping half the water. Wow. I wouldn't, I mean, it looks deep to me. I don't know. It don't look like it's no. You fall out, I won't have to throw your light yet. Okay. <laughs> you stand up. I got like my hair. It's all windblown. Yeah. <laughs> Daddy's got in my flip going. I hadn't been on a boat in a long, long time. Used to go out well, every year. Okay. I believe I'm not mistaken if you drive in here. Really? God, I'd have loved to have seen them. But you said that was 15 years ago, right? Yeah, about 15 years yeah, I wonder if they pulled them up, put them in a museum. I don't know. It might be somebody yard art or something. Uh, that sucks. Somebody did that. Before. I ran all these tributaries to Tennessee River. That's how I found this place. Yeah. Exploring. Just come along and you're like, holy crap, there's a totem pole in the water. <laughs> yeah, like, wow. That's good. <laughs> I don't read Cherokee, but. Uh, yeah. Cherokee writing all over and stuff. I'm gonna put the anchor out and do things. Oh. No, we'll end up. Who knows New where? <laughs> See, I, I'm gonna do spirit box on top of the flooded town of Chota. And the vibe here, I mean, as soon as we come around that corner over there, I could just start feeling the vibe of this place. I don't know how to describe it. You just feel like you're at a place that's really important, really great. So let's do this, guys. Okay, guys, I sent my mail meter out. See if that might go off. Dad's going to sit and have his pipe. We're in 9.2 feet of water. 9.2 feet of water. If there are any spirits here, my name is Jessica. I mean no harm or disrespect. Look, we got a point four. Oh, 11. Oh, what 
crap, it went to 20. Holy shit, it's been 38. Are y'all saying that? 73. Do you have any equipment directly underneath there? Power wise? Mm -mm. You shouldn't be doing that. You know, I'm liable to get my butt whipped for being here. Why? Well, when I was a kid, I was six years old, and uh, they built a shopping center right at the end of the street called Eastgate, his first shopping yeah. center ever built in Chattanooga. <coughs> and they, I would go to the end of the street on my bicycle and watch them work, and they would uh, bulldozers right there knocking all this pine forest down. And, and one day it rained, and nobody was out there. And I went out there, and my mother read in the paper that they had found this uh, Cherokee burial ground out there and it was the Brainerd Mission what it turned out to be and she was talking about the Indians that were out there so I was curious and when the bulldozers were sitting out there and all these piles of logs and brush had piled up but nobody was there so I tried to ride my bicycle out there and the mud got gummed up on the tires but in the fenders to the point I had to drag my bike home and I had I was about eight inches taller because all the mud stuck on the bottom of the shoes and I got home and my mother whipped me like a yard dog <laughs> and want to know what why I was out there in that muddy field and I said I was looking for the Indians <laughs> and she said there ain't no Indians they're all gone and she whipped me harder so, I'm glad my mother ain't here. We get whipped right now. Oh my <laughs> god! The Indians. Oh my god! <laughs> I got my butt beat over them Indians. <laughs> That's so funny. That thing was beeping a little bit, and I stepped down to zero. Sometimes. <laughs> it shouldn't have to have one. Who's here with us? Are you part of the Cherokee tribe? Do any of you know Nancy Ward? <laughs> That's getting freaked up on their market. <laughs> A lot of people use this. <laughs> Do you know Chief Dragon Canoe? How many of you are here? Do you like us visiting your home? <laughs> Angry. <laughs> well, we're gonna walk around and look in the woods is that okay and visit your chief's grave well thank you for speaking to us but you must remain here and not follow us home in the name of Jesus. Dad's a skeptic. He don't know what to think. Thank you. Goodbye.
But uh, uh, we'll listen to it back, see. And you can sometimes hear things in the moment, but a lot of times you got to listen to it back. So if you didn't hear anything real well, listen to it back with headphones on, earbuds in. But it's just so weird that that hadn't been moving much at all. But um, anyway, that was really weird how it started going. Um, as soon as I told them, we would start talking to them. So they're interested. But we're going to explore the grounds here too and the woods. So let's go do that. Okay, guys, we just stopped right here. I'm leaving my stuff in the boat. I'm sure it will be fine because we're in the middle of freaking nowhere. <laughs> We're taking a travel through the woods. You know, uh, I don't know if all you fans know this, but I look for stuff like this. History just oh, I know. me. And, and uh, they sent me all over East Tennessee at one time training people how to locate merit drum and use test equipment. So I would spend, you know, they say, you want a motel or you want the cash? I said, give me the cash. Because motels drove me nuts after about two days. Uh -huh. So I would camp out all winter in a campground, and people couldn't believe I was out there in the cold camping. But, and they said, you know, what do you do out there? Ain't it boring? I said, no, man. You got... <laughs> and I carried a cheap pack, bag of dog food, throw it out in the woods. And, and uh, I had deer and skunks and everything you <laughs> could believe, you know, kept me company. Oh. And, uh, anyway, they had a, there was some Cherokee Indians there, and they had a uh, powwow, and they invited me to the powwow. And we sat around beating drums and throwing the back on them, chanting and all that. And I kept asking questions because I just couldn't, you know, get enough. So the the woman that was in charge of them, she was uh, chief uh, five stars of the Buffalo Creek Band of Eastern Cherokees. And uh, she named me Truth Searcher. <laughs> That's how I got my Indian name. <laughs> And where was this at? North Carolina? No, it was uh, up at Nor on the hill above Norris Dam. Oh. It's on the Flint River. The Flint River? Flint River. Clint. I don't know exactly what he said. I'm going in the jungle now. You were asking if uh, he didn't go way back to the boat. Oh, I know, right? And he, he said he didn't have to worry about it because he's with da he's You okay? okay? I'm with Daniel Boone. Watch the briars. Nope. Is it all food? No, honey, I'm, I've been eating at them briar like nothing compared to old Satan's house, man. Went there. These trees are spooky as hell, man. This looks like a good place to yeah, have a witch, looked, witch's around, house. Around, look at that tree. Oh, yeah. Yeah, how straggly that tree is. Yeah. Now, people think, I mean, this is nothing right here. But you get in the woods and people wonder how you keep from getting lost. That's a road sign, just like fish. Yeah. Around. You look for stuff like that. And yeah. There's road signs everywhere out here. Look at that tree. Oh my gosh. Do you remember stuff like that? <coughs> You're never lost until you can't find your way back. <laughs> yeah, right. There's some spooky woods, guys. They're pretty, but creepy as hell. Oh my gosh, look at all that. Let's walk up here and see what we find. I reckon I wasn't thinking about it. You see that pine tree? Yeah. Remember that? Right here. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> the little honeysuckles. Oh, they smell so good. I hadn't eaten on a honeysuckle and I don't know when. Eat yeah. You pull out that yellow part out of the middle and suck on that sucker. It's good. We did that all the time as kids. Wow. 
Here we are. <clears throat> Look how people brought him stuff. This was their chief. Probably their last chief, I guess. People have given him rocks and flowers. And I don't know how to say it. Akonostoda? Akonostoda? Akonostoda. Yeah. Great warrior of the Cherokees. Look how they did a stone. That was cool. You know, this feels like to me walking through the woods and you come out to a big circle. I feel like I'm at Pet Cemetery. <laughs> Cherokees in the Little Tennessee Valley. We have the Deer Clan, the Wild Potato Clan. Let's see. The Wolf Clan. The Paint Clan. The Bird Clan. The Long Hair Clan. And the Blue Clan. Now, I think Nancy Ward was, was she of the Wolf Clan? Uh, no, I think she was. Does somebody actually like burn things out here? I don't know what that. Because that looks like ashes, don't it? Yeah, I don't know what that signifies. It may be some ceremony. <coughs> yeah, well, they come out here and maybe honor them every once in a while and well, burn they, fire. They, they have the eternal flame. You know what that is? Yeah, stuff burning all the time. Well, it's... Uh, it was taken from uh, the uh, Cherokee campfire, and uh, the eternal flame was carried. The fire never stopped, and they carried it all the way to Oklahoma. When sent out oh! The fire. Now there's an eternal flame, and all of these were lit from were lit from the original Cherokee campfire, <clears throat> and they've never gone out. And that right now, some of them are gas powered. But they were lit from the original flame. Wow. There's one up in Cherokee uh, where they put on the play under these hills. Or in North there. Carolina. Yep, in Smokies. And then down in Georgia, just over the line, what's the name of that place? Red Clay. Uh, that was where the Cherokees met. They had councils down there. There's one there. Those are the only two that I know of around here, but I know there's one in Oklahoma. So. Hmm. That's amazing. That's crazy. That is wild. Somebody's shooting it up out there. Spirits of the Cherokee. I do have Cherokee blood in me. What in the hell? Could you speak to me inside of my camera? I'm gonna see if I can find something in the woods. Something to um, place on their graves to honor them. There's nothing really here but pine cones. I don't know what's good or what's offensive. Mmm. Here we have some. Oh man, what is that? Dude. 
There's a freaking eggshell. Crazy. Here. This might be a good rock. Here you are, dear chief. Gave him a rock. I need to find something set in the center. It's kind of weird. You're supposed to set that rock down. It's like the wind's picking up on the water. Ooh, get away, bug. on there. I was saying something was on here at one time. Isn't that a shame? Wow. Look at that view. That is just beautiful and serene. These poor, poor people. Our next stop is to the grave of Nancy Ward. Now, she did remarry an Irish trader, which was already married to a white woman. But anyway, she did marry him, had a child with him. Nancy helped sign a peace treaty in 1781 with the Americans. Because even though Dragon Canoe was more on the side of the British, wanting them to win this revolution. Nancy was on the side with the white settlers. <laughs> so she was on the side of the Americans. And due to her patriotic acts, she saved a woman that was captured at Fort Watuga. She helped warn those settlers before the attack that it was going to happen. They were going to burn this woman, and she had the power to say, no, that's not going to happen because she was the beloved woman. So she took the woman into her home, nursed her. The woman helped show her how to do certain type of weaving, how to have dairy cows. They learned a lot of stuff from this woman. And she was just all about for peace everywhere she could be. She was trying to do a treaty one time with John Severe that the town Sevierville is named after. And he was very shocked that they sent a woman to help do these negotiations. And she was shocked because she was like, where's your women? Why aren't they here? She firmly believed that women had the power to be at peace, to be the ones to force peace, to encourage it, that it was up to the women and that everybody should listen. And it was during a time when women really weren't heard. So due to her patriotic acts, she was given the title of patriot by the daughters and the sons of the American Revolution. And as you'll see at her gravesite, they honor her there. And her fifth great granddaughter is Beth Chapman. She's a singer songwriter in Nashville. She wrote a play called The Beloved Woman of the Cherokee about her grandmother, about her life growing up. I've not been able to find the play online, but snippets. But the music's on there and it's just wonderful. It really, really is. You know that women are always looked upon as nothing, but we are your mothers you are our sons. Our cries all for peace. Let it continue. This peace must last forever. Let your women's sons be ours. Our sons be yours. Let your women hear our words. Non Yehi, also known as Nancy Ward. Hey guys, what is up? It's your girl Jessie here. I am at the grave of Nancy Ward. 
So here's the sign. It says, High Priestess of the Cherokees, an always loyal friend of white settlers, is buried on the ridge to the west. She repeatedly prevented massacres of white settlers and several times rescued captives from death at the hands of her people. She's also credited with the introduction of milk cows and many improvements in homemaking into the Cherokee economy. Five Killer Son. I'll feel brother. That ain't, that's just a memorial thing, right? That ain't the actual grave. So her inn was somewhere around here that she had before she passed away. <laughs> Our cry is all for peace. Nancy Ward, aka Nanya Nanya, Long Island of the Holston. So there's the cemetery way up there. She was like probably <laughs> one of the most famous, famous Cherokee Indians. <clears throat> she really was. Oh, that's all in Cherokee there. Beloved mother, we love you until we meet again, your grandchildren. Wow. Ben Hampton did a painting on a what? Nancy Ward. Did he? Did he? Yeah, just for her. Oh. I think I may have it. I got in my house. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Is that her in that painting? I know, because I've seen that painting all my life. Yeah, that's, right. that's Nancy Ward. Holy Nancy crap. Ward. I think five killer and longfeller in it too. Barrel side of Nancy Ward. How'd you find out that it was Nancy's painting? Does it oh, say on I, your painting? I bought it from Ben Hampton, you know. My mother used to, every time he'd come up with a new painting, he was on, she was on his <coughs> list. And she would take me over there with her. Yeah, I remember when I was and little I thought, going to a Ben Hampton store all the time. Well, it wasn't a, I, it wasn't a, we went through his house. Well, maybe that's where yeah, I was I at. Directly from him. Is that, is it, well, did he live kind of close to where we used to live? He lived, uh, you know, I can't remember where he lived. But is that, I mean, did you carry me there before? I, no, I don't think I ever did. Oh. Me. I just went there with mother. She, she was, he, she was on his list. She was, she was one of his favorite fans, and so he, she was on his list. And he, she got a card in the mail every time he had a new painting come out. Really? <laughs> and she would take me over there, and I'd buy So y'all would just go straight to this freaking house and buy them? I bought, I bought several. Oh, my God. But this is where they are right here. Oh, is that her there, or is that just a... No, this is her. Really? Longfellow five to her. So you can't actually walk up there? Well, you can. You can't go in there, but you can yeah. go around it. Wow. Oh, God, that scared the hell out of me. Look at that. You got a little Indian head <laughs> poked out right there. I was like, what in the heck? Daughters of the American Revolution. So she died in 1822 in appreciation for her contribution and her culture and her people. They put that there in 2018. There's something over there, I guess. Uh, I guess there was flags there at one time that look like there are now. How about I don't get in trouble walking on this? They look like they've planted anything. What does that say? Patriot? It. Wow. Priestess and prophetess of the Cherokee Nation, the Pocahontas of Tennessee, the constant friend of the American pioneer, 1738 to 1822. So this one was erected 1923. Here's Longfellow.
five killer private Morgan Juniors Cherokee Indian War of 1812. Right by this really old tree, man. So somewhere down in through here is where her inn used to be. Did someone hang up sage? There's a sage. Someone hung this up and burnt it for her here. I probably shouldn't even be touching it. See, here's one they burnt up. They've been hanging up sage and burning it for. How about that? Never seen that at a graveyard before. <laughs> That's really cool. Here's one there that sold leather. Wish I'd known that. I brought some sage and come burn it for her. Okay, guys, I'm going to um, try to do some spirit box here. Um, I'm really excited to be here at the grave of, of such a great lady, so I hope she want to speak to me. Somebody burnt some sweet grass for Are we speaking to Nancy? I think I got a lot of really good stuff there. Um, it's just really cool to be here, guys. I'm going to show you more of the place. Dad's got some drone shots, so I hope you 
enjoy this little visit to Miss Nancy Ward's grave and the history, guys. Until next time, we'll see you later. Bye-bye. Music everywhere